Hi and thank you for joining me. Today we will be creating a Linux FTP server by installing VSFTPD and authenticate it against Active Directory. Make sure to hang around to the end of the video. I will be creating a PowerShell and a Python script to automate the home folder creation process for the Linux server. You can find chapters in the description below, so if you're familiar with any part, you can just jump ahead to the section you need. If this is your first time visiting this channel, please consider subscribing. In a previous video, I have already joined this Linux machine to Active Directory. If you didn't watch that, you will find a card up there now. Go ahead and watch that, then come back to continue. I'm using Debian system, but it should work just the same in Ubuntu. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing we will do, as we all know, is to update and upgrade our system. You should be familiar with this process now. sudo apt-y update and sudo apt-y upgrade and hit enter. The next thing we will do is to install vsftpd. sudo apt-y install vsftpd. The vsftpd service should have started now after the installation. To check, we will type sudo service vsftpd status and we should get a similar response to this. Now the next step is to edit the vsftpd configuration file but before doing that I would recommend backing up the file first so I will type sudo cp etc vsftpd.conf space etc vsftpd.conf1 hit enter and now that we have backed up the file Let's edit the file. I will type sudo nano etc vsftpd.conf. Here we will change a couple of settings. I will leave a copy of my configuration file in the description. The first thing is anonymous underscore enable and we will set this to no. Local underscore enable we will set this to yes. Write underscore enable we will set this to yes to be able to transfer files ch root underscore local underscore user will be set to yes to lock the user to their folder so they won't be able to navigate to other folders. After we will add this directive to allow the user write access to their home folder, allow underscore writable underscore ch root and we'll set this to yes. Now moving on to the security part, we will secure the FTP traffic through SSL slash TLS. So let's exit of the configuration file and create the SSL certificate. For this you can create a self-signed certificate for example with OpenSSL or use an existing one from Let's Encrypt or a similar service. We will use OpenSSL to generate a self-signed certificate for this. I will type sudo apt-y install OpenSSL if it's not already installed on your system. To create the certificate, I will type this command and I will leave a copy of this in the description below. Now let's head back to the configuration file and configure the FTP server to use this SSL certificate. Now let's find the certification part or SSL certification part in the configuration file. This is usually in the end of the file. So we will come here and change SSL underscore enable to yes. Now let's put the location of the key and PEM files we created earlier. So I will paste their location here. Now we should restart our FTP services. I will type sudo service vsftpd restart and hit enter. Now let's test with FileZilla from my computer. I will type the server IP address which is 10 10 10 I will use a domain user which is administrator at techstory.local and the password and hit enter. Great! It's working. But if you remember from a previous session, we have already signed in with this user to the Linux machine and that's why this is working because the home folder was already created. But what if we want the domain users to have access to the FTP services without having access to the actual server, which is usually the case? Now let me demonstrate. I will use a domain user that was not used on this server before. That will be test at techstory.local and the password here. 
and as we can see we cannot log in because the home folder for that user was not yet created so that user need to be logged into the actual server to be able to access the FTP services to fix this or to work around this we will do a couple of steps we will create a PowerShell script on the Windows side to export all users in a specific OU for example we will then create a Python script on the Linux side to open this file and create home folders for all the users that are within this file. We will then only allow SSH access for the admin IP address and allow FTP to all the subnets. So we will start by creating a shared folder on the Linux server to have the user.csv file in there. I will simply install Samba on Linux sudo apt-y install samba hit enter now let's create a folder i will create a folder called scripts under the home directory i will navigate there cd slash home then create the folder sudo mk dire scripts hit enter because this is just a test i will give this folder a triple seven permission sudo chmod dash r seven 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 slash home slash scripts hit enter now let's open the configuration file and share that folder sudo nano etc slash samba slash smb dot conf i will navigate to the end of the file and add this section I will leave this in the description below but of course change those values to fit your own information for me the path will be slash home slash scripts then not read only and finally everyone can have access of course you can add a specific user and password but this is just for demonstration so I will allow everyone now let's close and restart the smbd services I will type sudo service smbd restart and now I can test accessing this folder from my PC I will open the run I will press on start menu on R on my keyboard I will type backslash backslash 10 10 10 122 which is the IP address for this server hit enter and there it is now let's move on to the PowerShell script part. Here is my domain controller and I already have PowerShell ISE opened as an admin and you can see the script here. In this part we will get all the users within the OU that is called test that is located in this domain. I want the property SAM account which is the login name and I'm exporting a CSV file that contains all those users in this folder that is shared on the Linux machine great and if we run this and let's open the folder and there is the file if we open the file we can see we have two headers so we need to skip those in the python script and only loop over the actual users great now on to the python script the first thing we will do is to install python on our linux machine i will leave a link in the description below for an article demonstrating how to install Python on your Linux. If you already have Python installed, then feel free to skip this part. We will download all dependencies necessary to build Python first. I will paste this command, hit enter. And now let's download Python. I will paste this command and hit enter. The next step will be to unzip the file. I will type tar xf python 3.9.1.tgz. Hit enter. And now let's navigate into that folder cd python 3.9.1. Hit enter. And we will run the file configure. So I will type dot slash configure dash dash enable optimizations to optimize the python binary now let's start the python build you can first type NPROC to find out the number of cpu cores you have i have four 
So I will type sudo make j4. And this will take a while to finish, so I will pause and return once this is done. Now we will install Python binaries sudo make alt install hit enter and that's it if you type python 3 dash dash virgin you should get the current version of python you have now let's open the script here so let's walk through the script and see what we're doing i will also leave a link to the script in the description below so the first thing we have here is the import statements i'm importing the os and the csv modules the OS to manipulate folders and the CSV to manipulate CSV files. Here I'm creating a variable called path, which has the actual path which the home folder will be created in. Of course, you will need to change this to fit your own path. Here I am opening the CSV file, then adding all of its content to the variable reader. I'm also defining that the delimiter is the comma sign. Then I'm skipping two rows, which as you remember, the first two rows are headers, so we're not going to use those. Here I'm putting all the content in a list variable called rows, which we will loop through later. Now, if we try to print items within a list, we will get extra characters, which we do not want. We want the exact username alone with no quotation or brackets. So within the loop, I'm defining a set of characters in this variable. I am then taking each item in the list represented by the variable x and putting it in a string variable. Within that loop, I'm creating a second loop that will loop over those characters we just created that we will remove from each string, and then simply removing those characters from each item or username on the list. And then we're just printing the full path for verification. And here I'm checking that this path does not already exist or this folder does not already exist if it doesn't exist then i'm creating that folder and i am setting permissions now feel free to change this permission to whatever you want and that's it now we have two options option number one is we can do this manually we can simply run those scripts every morning for example to export all users check which users have folders and those that does not have home folders we create for them Option number two is to schedule both scripts to run once a day, for example, using cron tab on Linux and task scheduler on Windows. So let's start with Windows. I will open task manager as an admin, right click and run as administrator. I will click on basic task. I will name this fetch underscore users, but feel free to name it whatever you want. Then click next. I will choose to run this daily and hit next. I will choose to recur every one day and I will choose two minutes from now to execute this task. Then I will click next. I will leave this as start a program and click next. Here I will browse to the powershell.exe file location that is in the Windows folder, then system32, then Windows PowerShell, then v1, and finally the powershell.exe file. Here in the argument section, I will add the location of my PowerShell script between quotations and then hit next. And here I will highlight the open the properties dialog checkbox when done and click finish. In the properties dialog, I will highlight the run with the highest privileges and click OK. And now we can see it's running. And if we check our shared folder, we can see the user file is exported. Great. So moving on to the cron job, so in case cron is not installed on your system, just type sudo apt-y install cron and hit enter. Now sudo cron tab-e to add a new job to be executed. We're going to go to the end of the file to add a new job. But before we do that, let me just go quickly to the crontab.guru website to give a quick demonstration of how the scheduling or the syntax of scheduling work. So here, as we can see, we have five parts when writing a date in cron. We have minutes, hours, day, month, and finally day of the week. 
After that, we write the actual command that we want to be executed. We want this to run daily, so we will leave the day, month, and day of the week empty. We're just gonna put asterisks there, which means we want this to run daily. And I will add the time with one minute from now. Then I will type the location of my Python, which is located in user slash bin slash Python 3.9, followed by the location of the script. Now let's save and exit, and we can check the cron jobs we have by typing sudo cron tab dash l, and this will show us all the jobs that are scheduled. And here we can see the job we just created. Now let's double check if the folders were created. I'm gonna type cd slash home slash local slash text story. Hit enter. And then I'm gonna type ls. Fantastic. Now to test with a domain user that we did not use on this machine before, which is test at textory.local. Here is my filezilla. I will log in with this user. Hit enter. And we are logged in. Now let's try to get out of the home folder. I'm going to double click here and again. And as we can see, we are locked to the home folder and we can't navigate out of it. Great work, everything works exactly as it should. Now the final step we need to do is to allow SSH only from my IP address or the admin IP address in this scenario and allow FTP access to the entire subnet. If you're using Ubuntu then UFW is probably already installed. If you're using Debian like me then most likely you will need to install it. So you will type sudo apt dash y install ufw hit enter now let's enable the firewall i will type sudo ufw enable and if you get a warning message just type yes and enter now let's check the status of the firewall sudo ufw status and you should get an active status now the next step is to add a rule to allow SSH from my IP address and then change the default of our firewall to deny. So the default would be deny all traffic except for the rule that are specified. So I will paste this command which will accept all SSH traffic on port 22 that is coming from my IP address. I will then set the firewall default to deny all traffic by typing sudo ufw default deny hit enter. I will then paste this command to accept all FTP traffic on port 21 that is coming from this subnet 10.10.10.0/24. And finally we can check the rules we have by typing this command sudo ufw status numbered and we can see both rules are active. And that's it. I know this has been a long video, but we got a lot done in this session. I hope this was fun and useful for you guys. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment if you enjoyed the content. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. And I'll see you in the next one.